How's it going everyone? In this video, we're going to take a look at variables and how we can hook them to use them inside of our own tweaks. As an example, in iOS there's a class called Timer Manager. If you don't know, Timer Manager is the class responsible for the timer in Apple's clock application. We can see that it has a class method called Shared Manager, and if you're familiar with iOS programming, you know that this is a singleton, which means we can retrieve a global Timer Manager object. It's only initialized once, and no matter how many times we call Shared Manager, it returns the same Timer Manager object. It's important to note that this is a class method rather than an instance method because of the plus sign at the beginning of line 2. Normally, in iOS, to use a class method, we do something like this. However, Theos doesn't like this, and we have to add the required logos code to tell Theos that we're using a class method. Luckily, the change is easy, and just by adding a percent %c with parentheses around the class name, we can fix the error like so. This is one of the easiest ways to find a valid object for our tweak, and we'll probably see the singleton pattern again and again in later videos. So what about those variables? Well, here's a more complete version of the Timer Manager interface. On lines 2 through 4, we have what are known as instance variables, or IVARs for short, and on lines 7 through 11, we have properties. If you're curious about the difference between these two types of variables, Apple has documentation available for both. Just by reading the variable names, we can see that there is some interesting data that might be helpful to our tweak. For example, the UI local notification object associated with the timer, how much time the timer has remaining, what sound the timer will use when it goes off, and so on. To retrieve information about an instance variable, we can use a function provided by Cydia Substrate called mshookivar, which will return the address of our instance variable. This function expects a few things from us, and they're all straightforward. First, the function expects the type of the instance variable. Note that if you're retrieving an object like UI local notification, we tack an asterisk to the end to tell Theos that we're looking for an instance of the object and not the class itself. Next, the function wants to know the owner of the IVAR. In our case, it's the TM object we created with the singleton. And lastly is the name of the IVAR as a string. Ours was called underscore notification. If we put that all together, we can actually store a copy of the IVAR in a new variable called notif. Cool. But what about the properties? Well, they're actually much easier to work with because they're synthesized by default which means there's a setter and a getter method generated automatically. If you want to do anything to the property, we can probably do it using one of those two methods. Let's take a look at a proof of concept. All right, so this proof of concept is pretty simple. If we, if we present a UI alert controller, like so, rather than the normal text you would expect here, it says Zane's iPhone 64, Zane's Apple Watch 80. And that's grabbing all of the devices connected to my phone, including my phone, as well as their battery percentages. Um, you can see it says 64 on here, and it says 100 on my phone. That's just because I have it opened in QuickTime, um, and it says 100 all the time. It also says it's 941 right now, but it's not. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we know how to create the tweak. Theo spin Nick PL. Oh, whoops. I forgot to delete it from my last attempt. Um, all right. And we're hooking Springboard again so we can leave it as default. Uh, if we go into that directory and we open it inside of a text editor. Cool. Can delete that giant comment again. And now we need to look at what we actually need. Um, we need the BC battery device controller.h and we need BC battery device.h. Now the controller is the global object. As you can see, it has a shared instance right here. So that means we can grab an instance of BC battery device controller and it has as an IVAR 
the sorted devices. Now, this is an NS array of BC battery devices. So whenever we retrieve this instance variable, we can loop through all of the elements in the array and we can retrieve data about them, like the name and the percent charge. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, first, I like to make it explicit um, what I'm accessing. So I'm gonna write an interface for the BC battery device controller and the BC battery device. Oops. All right, so we know that BC battery device controller has a shared instance class method right here. And we also know that it has an instance variable called sorted devices. So I can, I can open a curly brace up here and paste that in. And now we can see that our IVAR is here. And Theos also knows that our IVAR is here now. Um, and we also have, inside of BC battery device, we have the percent charge. And we have the name. Cool. So I don't think we need any methods for BC battery device. Um, so we're just going to keep writing. We need to hook UI view controller. And that's because um, whenever we present a UI alert controller, this method is called. And this method belongs to UI view controller. So if we just copy this method right here, paste it inside of here, fix the terrible indention. Um, we can start writing code to override this method. So like you already know, um, I, if I were to compile this right now, it wouldn't do anything at all. Um, whenever present view controller ran, no code would run at all. And that's problematic because present view controller is used in probably all apps actually. Um, so we need to make sure that we run the original code. Um, to do that, I'm just going to check if the view controller to present is kind of class UI alert controller class. And if it's not um, a UI alert controller class, then we need to run the code that was there before. All right. So now we need to store our alert controller as an alert controller so that we can use it in our code because right now this is a UI view controller and not an alert controller. Um, so I need to cast the view controller to present as a UI alert controller. So now I can do stuff like this and uh, I won't get any errors for it. All right. So we have an alert controller we need to override the message of that alert controller with the data that I just showed you. So I'm gonna go back. Um, we need to populate it with all of the devices as well as their battery levels. So how do we do that? Well, first we need an instance of BC battery device controller. So we can do BC battery device controller. Um, I'm gonna abbreviate BCB. All right. Um, now, this won't compile. Like I just said, we need that percent %c and the parentheses around it for this to work. Um, I'm going to leave it out intentionally for now because the error message that it shows is terrible, and I want you to see that. Um, but we're just going to keep going as if it's right. All right. So next, we need to grab the NS array of the sorted devices. So again, we can just do NS array devices is equal to BCB. Actually, no, this is where we use the MS hook IVAR. So we do MS hook IVAR and then the, I don't know what these are called, greater than less than signs. Um, and we provide the type. 
And now we're looking for an NS array because this is of type NS array. And the owner of the instance variable, which is BCB. And as a string, the devices. So sorted devices. So now right here, we have an NS array of all of the connected devices to our phone. Um, we'll use the syntax a few more times just so we can get the hang of it. We're going to iterate through all of the devices in here. So we're going to do for ID device. I guess we could do, yeah, let's do ID device and devices. And then I can do NS string device name. And um, we'll call this device charge. All right. So the device name can be retrieved from the instance variable uh, name. So I can do ms hook ivar ns string. This belongs to device. And we're looking for name. Same thing here. We're looking for a long, long this time. And notice there's no asterisk. That's because this is a primitive data type and not an object. Again, it belongs to device. And we want the percent charge. All right. So just to make this more explicit, um, device is of type BC battery device. And because it's an object, we need that asterisk. Um, all right. So now these variables store the name and the battery level of all of our devices, but it doesn't do anything with them yet. So now we want to grab that alert controller that we created earlier and set the message of it to these two bits of information. So to do that, I'm going to create an NS mutable string. I'm going to call it new message. All right. And so now we can append to the string, whatever we want. So let's do that. NS message append string device name. Um, I guess we can split this into chunks. We're going to append a colon just to space things out. Um, and we're going to append the device charge. Actually, this is a bad idea because this is a long, long, not a string. So instead, what I'm going to do is turn this into one statement by using ns string string with format and specifying the format like this. All right. So if you don't know what I'm doing here, um, this is appending a string that looks like this. So the percent at sign is going to be replaced with the device name, and the percent LLD is going to be uh, replaced with the device charge. And that's all happening in one statement, so we don't have to break it up. And I also want a new line at the end of every device, so that it's not all on one line. All right, so now our new message is populated. It has all of the devices as well as their charges. Um, I'm also going to add a percent sign here for style. Cool. Um, and if I do AC set message to the new message, the alert controller right here will have a new message, obviously. And lastly, I want to return percent a ridge. And I don't know if I've covered this before, but if you add a parenthesis, we can pass in new arguments to this method. So before we were passing view controller to present flag and completion, and this would run the original code, but we don't want this anymore. We want this. So let's replace view controller to present with our alert controller and save it. And let's go ahead and start compiling. Um, again, this won't work because I didn't add that percent %c up here. And we'll see what the error message looks like. 
Oh, whoops. Oh, that's right. You can't add a percent sign unless you add two percent signs. I think. Okay, cool. So here's the message I was expecting. It says undefined symbols for architecture, uh, and then it tells you BC battery device controller, and it doesn't tell you anything else. It's actually one of the worst error messages I've ever seen. Um, but we know how to fix it. So let's go ahead and fix it. And now if we make package install, everything should work fine. Um, but I just wanted to show that to you because I've seen this a lot um, when I first started developing tweaks and it confused me every time because it's not descriptive. All right, so we're gonna kill backboard. This is just respringing the device. And if I pull up QuickTime here, we should get exactly what we expect. Cool. So we have um, we have an alert controller with the name of our device, a colon, and then the percentage charged. And then we also got that percent sign as well. So that's pretty much it for this proof of concept. I thought it would be a really good idea to cover IVARs because there's a lot of information um, that belongs to classes that is stored inside of instance variables. And it's a little bit confusing for newcomers uh, to start manipulating this data. Um, take note that whenever I do something like this in a string device name MS hook IVAR, this is creating a copy. This isn't hooking the instance variable. So if I were to change, if I were to do something like uh, device name, it's not a mutable string, but if I were to do something like this, it wouldn't replace the original name it would only replace this new name. But if you wanted to hook the IVAR directly, you would have to do some, some pointer magic. Um, but that's out of scope for this video. So again, hope you learned something. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.